Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to New Brit Workshop. I went down to one of the Axminster stores recently and I'm afraid temptation got the better of me and I bought myself two more sustainers for storage. And these are the, the mini sustainers and these are absolutely sweet as anything. If I was going to work with a lunchbox every day, then uh, this bottom one, which is the uh, Sys Mini 3, uh, would be the one I'd, I'd take. Uh, and on top is the Sys Mini 1. So the two of them, they're joined together. They T-lock just like any other sustainer, and they're really useful. Now, my intention with this one is that if I'm just nipping somewhere and someone says, oh, would you come and drill this, that, or the other, uh, I can take a CXS in here with all its bits and pieces, uh, and I could throw in a few drills as well if I wanted, but everything uh, to do with the, the CXS is in there, apart from the charger and the spare battery, of course. But uh, this is just for a flying visit when you just want to put this on the back of the bicycle uh, or <laughs> next to you on the passenger seat of the car uh, and uh, go and help a friend out. Now this other one is a different matter and really this video is about making the inserts for the uh, Sys Mini 3. And uh, as you probably uh, would expect, I've got path dogs of various types. Uh, some which I've been testing, some left over from uh, prototypes and so on and so forth. And so I need somewhere to keep them. So what I've done is inside uh, this uh, Sys Mini 3, I've put some little storage units and you can see they're little shelving bits and pieces which fit in there and there are three of them all together for various things and they all fit in rather neatly. And this video is a very quick video to show you how I went about making these. Now, these are all mitre joints at the corners. There's nothing else other than the mitre and some glue uh, to hold this together. And uh, you'll see just how easy it is to do that in this video. And all of these fit down inside this little um, mini sustainer. And I absolutely love it. I'm just going to cut the rebates now, which will be uh, used to allow the bottom to fit into the side pieces here. I've already adjusted the cutter into the right position. I'm now just going to set up this fence so it's in the right position. And there you can see uh, that rebate. Now I've set this up with a bevel angle of 45 degrees, which I've previously checked to be spot on and I've done a test cut and again I'm checking to make sure that that cut is nice and square and it is. This piece uh, is exactly the right length for one of the long sides and I'm now able to use my stop arrangement here uh, to set up repeat cuts and it's easy to do. Uh, you put the, the known good piece in and you adjust the stop so that when the saw is lowered just touching where the cut would have been. Okay, so it's just perfect. So I now know that that stops in the right place and it's tightened up. So I can do repeat cuts to produce, uh, I think it's six of those that I need. And here's my uh, first uh, one of the new set. So there's that cut. Now I'm sure you've probably seen uh, me use this technique before. It's how to uh, join uh, the four uh, sides of a mitered box together. And it's very simple. You need a straight edge, and I've got this one which I've uh, loosely fixed to the uh, bench top. And I'm going to join these pieces temporarily with some masking tape. The important thing to do is to make sure there's a very slight overlap when you join them. So put a bit on there, cut it off there. Get them lined up and then push the tape down like so. And we'll put two more bits on there to make a proper job. So, so far it's in a straight line. Uh, do remember, uh, don't put two long pieces butting up to each other. Uh, you've got to go long piece, short piece, long piece, short piece. And we just continue this process and just let them overlap by a smidgen, like so. Uh, 
And once those four pieces are done, we then turn it over carefully. We're now going to put some glue in each of these uh, jointing uh, faces. And now it's time to bring this up together. And I'm now going to put a bit of tape at this end uh, just to keep it together. Right, confession time. Uh, when, when I cut all my bits of wood out, I, I cut the original bottoms undersized. Anyway, I've sorted that out now. Now, I've only just started to use this assembly square, and uh, what I quite like is the fact that uh, you, you're not necessarily trying to fix it to the table all the time. You could just slip it over a dog like that, just so it doesn't wander off anywhere. But then you've got these clamping options, which are, are pretty good. Uh, and I, I used it uh, with uh, a couple of these little spring clamps, uh, just to hold everything, so when the glue dried, it was absolutely square. Now it's a really good idea to get the, the base fitting nice and snug, uh, but obviously not so tight that you're going to break uh, the joint. Uh, glue applied, uh, not too liberally, sparingly really. You do want glue oozing out everywhere. Now the edge of the MDF is quite absorbent and as far as glue goes, and so I put a little bit along here as well. Help get it underway. And then in it goes. And I want this squeezed down into the corners quite nicely. So I'm just helping it down like so. I'm just going to check the excess glue here to get rid of the worst of it. And I, I use an old scraper to get into the the join there and there. And now I'm going to put a pair of clamps on this just to help it along its way. One there. I'm not putting a huge amount of pressure on this, but just enough to squeeze that down nicely. It only needs about half an hour like that and then uh, we can clean it up and we'll be ready for the next stage. And I'm in the process of making up some dividers that will go in these three little storage units that fit inside the box. It's, it's up to you to decide uh, the scheme that you, you would wish. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to set this up so I can have a uh, pile of super dogs there, uh, and then the guide dogs here, and the guide pups in the middle. Um, I think that's probably the, the best way. And different things on the, on the other uh, tiers as well. Uh, and these uh, inserts will get most of their strength uh, by uh, the glue which is on the bottom. But I am putting some glue up the ends as well. And I'm just going to hold these uh, in place. That's it. So I'll leave that to dry. And uh, then I've got a little bit of uh, sanding to do. I put a little bit of grain filler on these corners. You might be able to see it because um, I got a little bit of breakout as I was sawing those mitres just at the back of the cut, only a tiny bit. Uh, and I thought, well, it might as well make it look nice. And in order to uh, clean this up, I'm, I want to round off these edges a little bit. Um, and uh, and then just give it a quick once round just to make it all nice and clean. That feels good. Now I've got a block that goes down in here and this is so I can put the three millimeter pins in. I know I've got more than I need. Uh, and also the joining pieces. Uh, I, I've actually got two of those. I don't know how I achieved it, but there we go. So that's gonna fit down in there. Now, fits better one way than the other. So I have gotta make sure I get that right. Right, that's the right way around. 
And all I'm going to do is put a little dob of glue uh, roughly in the centre. That's it. And then all I've got to do is get that down. So now I can put my three millimetre pins in there. And there we have the bottom tray uh, in situ. And I'm going to rely on being able to grab uh, the sides of these supports in order to get it in and out rather than having any complicated arrangement for um, lifting and so on. But that's my basic PATH uh, guide system uh, creating a new top type gear. That's that and I've got the, some of the old kit here, the old 3mm pins and the old 3mm drill guide. And this tray will be used for guide dogs in here, super dogs in here, and I've also got uh, some guide pups, uh, although I've got a, a, a few of them in, in use at the moment. I've only got two which aren't in use. Uh, and uh, you could also put the original path dogs in there if you wished, and also the original uh, smaller path dogs in there if you wish and that they'll actually fit that way up as well so um, I think that's pretty good I'm rather pleased with the way this is turning out well and this layer uh, I've got some spaces for the long uh, path super dogs there and lots of other things can fit in here too so here's my box now i've got the bottom tray in there uh, this i intend to be the next tray down because there's not a lot in it and then this is my sort of main tray there and that fits in like so the lid shuts and that's my dog storage absolutely spot on. Perhaps I ought to produce a little label now. So there we go. Those are my inserts for the Sys Mini 3. Uh, incidentally, if I didn't have the uh, drill in here, then I could put any one of these inserts in here as well. Just like so. Now, the tolerances on the UJK Path Guide system and all of the UJK uh, associated dogs uh, as such that uh, your dogs are going to be quite tight in those dog holes on the bench. And so uh, sometimes they're a bit awkward to get out. Now it's not so bad if you've got a taller dog like this guide dog here, uh, where you can get a decent grip on it. But the guide pups, which have very little sticking up above the bench, can be very awkward. So I've come up with a, a couple of options for devices to help you get these out and I've made a separate video about how to make these, it's a very short video uh, and basically it's a, it's a little gadget uh, that you put down over uh, the dog that you want to remove, squeeze it tight and then lift and that saves hurting your fingers as you try and get the dog out of the hole. And it means that you can maintain the accuracy of your work on your bench because the, uh, the dogs in the dog holes are a very snug fit. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>